Elite. Good evening, everybody. Um, before we start our service um, this evening, I wanted to just let you know that we're recording this event tonight so that those um, who are unable to be with us uh, might be able to watch and listen at a later date. And your presence here indicates that you consent to this recording. Just uh, also to let you know, if anyone has hearing difficulties, please know that um, the captions uh, option are enabled in the Zoom room. So you can turn these on yourself um, on your own device. Um, so uh, just to let, just to say um, everybody is on mute. Um, uh, we have put everybody on mute and we would ask you to stay on mute, please, uh, for the whole of the service because there's um, over 200 people here. Um, tonight, so um, uh, there'll be a lot of background noise if you if anyone unmute. So please, could you could you stay on mute? So a very warm welcome to you all to the Compassionate Friends Annual Worldwide Candle Lighting. My name's Carolyn Bryce. I'm a bereaved parent, and I'm also the CEO of this wonderful charity, the Compassionate Friends, sometimes known as TCF. I found lots of support and understanding after my own um, uh, loss of my daughter from uh, TCF. And I'm now passionate about the work that we do um, offering peer support to bereaved parents, siblings and grandparents. This incredibly special online event began during COVID times. And this is now the fourth year of our virtual candle lighting together. I'm so glad that Compassionate Friends are able to host this event this evening, where we can come together in understanding and in support to remember and honour our precious, beautiful, cherished and much loved children, siblings and grandchildren, particularly during this very tough month for all of us. This evening's event is part of the Compassionate Friends Worldwide, Worldwide Candle Lighting, an annual event that actually began in 1997 and which continues to this day as grieving parents and families light candles at 7pm local time all around the world. Some light to get candles together with others in a, like an in-person event, others online like tonight's event, Other, others light a candle privately at home or with close family members or friends. The idea is to create a wave of light, of remembrance and hope circling the globe on the second Sunday of December. So before we begin this evening, I've just got a few housekeeping items to share with you. So as I said before, as you came into the Zoom room this evening, your sound was muted, so you were automatically muted. And we do ask that you keep your sound on mute for the whole of our evening together. There are so many of here, us here this evening, and if everyone, anyone is not on mute, it can create distracting background noise. Um, we hope also that you'll leave your videos on for the whole of the event, and particularly when we light our candles together at around 7 p.m. For safety, just a reminder to have your candle in a container and to remember to have a flame or a match or a lighter handy to light them with. Um, as you do have your videos on, can we ask that you don't move around too much or move your camera or device around too much as this can be quite distracting for others with us this evening. And just to also let you know that the chat box in this Zoom room has been disabled. And that again is because chat um, in, the, in the chat box can be distracting for others attending. Um, for instance, they might have to feel that they have to respond and so on. So we, we, we've disabled the chat. So we very much hope that our time together this evening will help to sustain you as we navigate this tough few weeks together. We appreciate, however, that this is a very challenging and difficult time of year and this event is emotional. So please know it's OK to be upset or feel the strength of emotion here together with your compassionate friends. 
sadly, we can't reach out to you with a comforting touch or a hug in this online environment. But we want you to know that we are thinking of everybody and we hold you all very much in our thoughts, even if we can't hold you physically in our arms. I'm going to hand over now to a TCF volunteer and celebrant, um, Linda Sewell, who will introduce herself and lead our candle lighting event this evening with some words and music. There will be some words shared now. We will light our candles together at approximately seven o'clock, followed by some closing words and some music. And the event will finish around 7.15, 7.20. So thank you so much, and I'll hand you over to Linda now. And thank you, Carolyn. A very warm welcome to you all this evening for this virtual gathering, to honour our children, to say their names, and to light candles in tribute to them. As Carolyn said, my name is Linda, and like many of you, I am a bereaved parent. I'm also a professional celebrant, and it's an absolute honour for me to lead this candle lighting service tonight. Around the world this evening, bereaved families are coming together to light a candle for their child, sibling or grandchild, to honour their lives and ensure that the world is encircled with the light of the love that surrounds them. Families remembering their children, siblings and grandchildren with love and with reverence this evening will include some poetry and music for reflection when we light our candles and poems will be read by fellow compassionate friends on behalf of us all. The worldwide candle lighting has been taking place for 27 years and tonight is the fourth ceremony that has been shared in the UK and beyond via Zoom. The ability to come together virtually means that we can participate in the security of our own homes, safe with our photographs, memories, tissues and candles in our own familiar environments, whilst knowing that we are not alone, that we are joined by thousands of others, similarly bereaved all around the world. And seeing so many faces on the screen is a powerful reminder that however isolated we often feel in this grief for our child, sibling or grandchild, in reality, we are not alone. Some of you are here for the first time, having only recently lost your beloved child, sibling or grandchild. Others have been grieving for longer, yet with a loss often still feeling like it was only yesterday. Wherever you are, and however long you have been grieving, you are warmly welcome this evening. For me, personally, 15 years have passed since the death of our lovely boy Tom at the age of 19. 15 years without him, and yet sometimes it can still feel like yesterday. Like you all, I sometimes wonder how on earth we have managed to live a day without him let alone for 15 years. But as time has gone on, he has become more woven into our every day, in the morning, throughout the day and at night. I feel strongly that he is an essential part of us and always will be. Perhaps you can resonate with this feeling, or if not yet, I hope that it will be how it feels for you too over time. The first reading this evening that we will share is called Woven, and I invite bereaved parent Barbara to read it to everyone. Remember to come off mute, Barbara. Right, sorry. This is a poem called Woven by Becky Hemsley. You're sewn into my habits like the way I make my tea. You're stitched within my waking hours, threaded through my dreams. The fibres of you run through words and phrases that I say. And all my memories of you embroider every day. 
the jokes she told embellished days that otherwise are bare. And all your little quirks make up my life of patchwork squares. It's you that knitted colour, that tied knots and bonds so strong, that your beauty and your essence still remain now you're gone. See, we are like a tapestry, all stitched and woven tight. And I know you're always with me in the fabric of my life. So when I start to feel things tangled up inside my heart, I stop and realise love is an enduring work of art. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara, for sharing those lovely words. For me, personally, having the support of the Compassionate Friends has been a huge part of the 15 year journey. In the early days, going to meetings and being with others who understood my pain was immensely comforting and it still is. I hope you too feel the benefit of that support. In time, over those long 15 years, I have forged friendships, beginnings I never thought possible that have been rich and rewarding and yet were born through the shared sorrow of child loss. Friends that I am so very grateful to have in my life, even though we all acknowledge our wish that our children were still here and we had never met. The Compassionate Friends offers such a wealth of support to help us all get through our days after losing a child, sibling or grandchild. The literature is so thoughtful and filled with empathy because the writers are similarly bereaved. The in-person and online support group meetings offer such important peer support for the same reasons and are enhanced by the peer-led training offered to all facilitators. Our helpline and private Facebook groups are literally a lifeline for so many. And the retreats bring comfort on so many different levels and our walks enable bereaved individuals to walk and talk together safely in nature. When I reflect on how TCF can and has helped so many of us, I am in awe of the humanity and generosity of the bereaved, how we can all help each other and in doing so help ourselves. We can hold out the light of hope in someone else's darkness. On behalf of us all, thank you TCF, to all the wonderful supporters, volunteers and staff from the bottom of my heart and yours. The next reading this evening is for all of you and I invite Becky, bereaved sibling, to read it. The Unbroken by Roshani Ray. There is a brokenness out of which comes the unbroken, a shatteredness out of which blooms the unshatterable. There is a sorrow beyond all grief which leads to joy and a fragility out of whose depths emerges strength. There is a hollow space too vast for words through which we pass with each loss out of whose darkness we are sanctified into being. There is a cry deeper than all sound, whose serrated edges cut the heart as we break open to the place inside, which is unbreakable and whole while learning to sing. Thank you, Becky. It may sound strange within that poetry to talk of joy after sorrow, yet it is possible for the two to coexist often walking hand in hand. And yes, we can emerge from that dark pit of despair with strength and grace and love to a place of greater peace and hope. Our hearts are still battered, still broken, yet still there is so much love within them for our children, siblings and grandchildren. Love that often falls as tears Love that can shine out brightly when we speak of them. Love that lights our faces and brings warmth to our broken hearts. This evening, as we gather together to remember and honour our children, siblings and grandchildren, the next poem we will share 
is adapted from Sweet Child by Donna Ashworth. And I invite bereaved parent Susan to share it with us all. Sweet Child by Donna Ashworth. When a light is as bright as a light you shone, there's no such thing as truly gone. When a smile is as precious as one you wore, you nestle in our hearts forevermore. When one so loved is taken too soon, the love that is left can outshine the moon. So much love with no place to be truly at peace. So we love you more, bitter sweet release. Sweet child, you were here for so little time, but the love that you left grows ever wide. Thank you, Susan, for sharing those words. In truth, the loss of a child not only leaves a gaping hole in the fabric of our world, but the loss reverberates across generations and echoes through time. They will always be a part of our family story and we are the guardians of their story to safely keep it and shine light when we can. Memory is a way of holding on to all that we love and keeping those memories close and sharing them when we choose is a precious gift. Our children, siblings and grandchildren have touched lives, probably far more than we realise, and they have left gifts with each of those touched by their existence, however brief. Gifts of love, compassion, understanding, empathy, patience, humility, generosity of spirit. Each of us has more depth more insight, more love, because they lived. Our next reading this evening is adapted from the writing of the poet, John O'Donoghue, and is read by bereaved father, Adrian. For a parent on the death of a child by John O'Donoghue. No one knows the wonder your child awoke in you your heart a perfect cradle to hold its presence. Inside and outside became one, as new waves of love kept surprising your soul. Now you sit bereft inside a nightmare, your eyes numbed by the sight of a grave no parent should ever see. Let the silent tears flow, and when your eyes clear, perhaps you will glimpse how your eternal child is a source of unseen love to parent your heart and persuade the moon to send new gifts ashore. Thank you, Adrian. In a short while, we will be lighting our candles and then we will take a few moments for reflection before our closing words and poems. The ritual of candle lighting is powerful. Rituals are important. They open channels which allow love to flow. And if your love slips out from your eyes and falls as tears, that is all right. We are all here for each other in a kind, compassionate, gentle and supportive way. I know that some of you have crafted candle holders especially, and others will have chosen a candle or holder for reasons meaningful to them. However you choose to light your candle and whatever you use to contain it will be exactly right for you now. And lighting our candles is special for each of us. The light will shine, connecting us to our child, sibling or grandchild connecting us to each other. And the light of our candles will shine out in tribute and join with the countless other candles around the world, shining a circle of light that is love. This big candle I light on behalf of all those who were unable to join us this evening to light candles for their children, siblings or grandchildren. Thank you. 
and I invite each of you now to light your own individual candles with us and we'll take a few moments to reflect. The next beautiful poem was written by bereaved parent Safina Powell. And as we sit in the candlelight, I invite bereaved parent Melian to share her words with us now. Remember to come off mute, medium. Apologies. Out of the darkness into light. When darkness comes, don't let it bring fear. Seek comfort in light. It will always be near. Raise up your head, look up to the sky, be blessed by the sun, let it shine in your eye. You'll find strength in light when all seems so dark. Look for a glimmer, there will be a spark. The flickering flame of a candle so bright can radiate hope and solace through light. 
Thank you, Medium, for sharing Athena's beautiful words. This evening, we have honoured our dearly loved ones in candle lighting, each candle lit for someone so precious, so unique, so loved and cherished that their light shines out for all to see and blends with our own. Yet within the candlelight, whilst honouring them, we are also mourning our children, siblings and grandchildren. My dear friend and fellow bereaved parent, Andrea, speaks of and has written about the morning light. In a recent blog post, she explained that the morning light is a gentle glow that grows stronger with the passage of time, that it is gentle and comforting, a safe place to displace dark thoughts. And being in the morning light gives a place to engage mind and heart in contemplation and remembrance. It can be a place where your life starts to grow around the loss you live with and joy can begin to shine, however unlikely that might feel just now. It is possible. Please hold on to that light because it is the light of love. Our connection with our child, sibling or grandchild is always there. We are connected by the bonds of love forever. It is love that keeps us going. It is love that underpins everything and our children are woven into everything we do, every step we take. The next poem is called Mountain Climbing and bereaved father Hugh is going to share it with us now. Mountain Climbing by Becca Fentler. Grief is one of the biggest mountains you'll ever have to climb. Not least because it's the one you absolutely won't want to. And people may talk of getting over it. But the truth is, I don't think we ever do. And that's not to say that we don't end up on the other side of the mountain. I'm not saying that we are stuck in one place forever. But rather than getting over it, perhaps we find a cave we can walk through, which brings us out the other side. It may be dark and dim and difficult but we make it through the light. Perhaps we find a path around the mountains that leads us to the other side. It may take a long time and be precarious, but we make it round. Or perhaps we just slowly edge our way past, a little up, a little through, a little round, step by step. No, I don't think we ever go over it. It is too big, too overwhelming, too insurmountable. So instead, we get through it, round it, or quite possibly, we just get by. Thank you, Hugh, for sharing those words from Becky Hemsley. And it is, of course, the love of our children, siblings and grandchildren that keeps us connected, that keeps us going, that helps us get by and shines the light of hope to hold on to forever. Love endures. Love is eternal. We end this candle lighting ceremony with these words adapted from those written by grieving mums, Carol, and Caroline. With each new day, may you find people who will hear your child's name, hear their story. With each new day, may you find places where you can speak your child's name, tell their story. Their story is your story. Their journey is your journey the two entwined. May you go now in love 
May you go now in light. May you go now in hope. May you go now in peace. Thank you for being here with us this evening and for joining in this ceremony of remembrance, love and candlelight. And as we sit in the light of our candles, I send my love and compassion to each of you. So I will say goodbye now and pass you back over to Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda, and our wonderful volunteer readers, Barbara, Becky, Susan, Adrian, Melian and Hugh. That really was a beautiful and poignant selection of words and music remembering our precious children, brothers and sisters and grandchildren. If you would like to share a photo of your candle with your, your family, your friends, then please do. Um, and maybe you would like to share on social media um, and we, we would welcome that if you would like to share with others. Please also remember that our Lights of Love tree is available on our website. The web ad address will be on a slide, which we will share with you in a moment. So please, if you haven't already, do go to the link and add your light of love for your son or daughter, sibling or grandchild. It's free to do, but you can give a voluntary donation to our charity and in memory of your loved one when you add your light. And anyone can add a light of love. So do share the link with family, friends and others who would like to remember your child, your sibling or your grandchild. As I mentioned at the beginning of this evening, part of why we have this event in this tough month is our hope that being together and sharing some moments of remembrance, togetherness, sadness too, and hope will help to sustain us as we navigate the days and weeks to come. We are very aware that we can feel very alone in these dark days of December, but you are not alone. We are all here together, connecting together and holding thoughts for each other. And that is all we can do. Hold on, hold on to and support each other and we will get through it together. Our peer support is here mm -hmm. for you. And we hope that knowing that there are others here today who understand and are alongside your heartbreak and your struggle will help to support and sustain you throughout December. And a reminder that if you need that if you if you need us at TCF, we try to be here for you as much as we can be. Our peer support is ongoing, whether you're very newly bereaved or are some years into grieving for your child or loved one. We continue to be there with our range of support, our helpline, our online support, our local one-to-one -one support and local groups, our retreat weekends and support days library and publication services and via our grief companion scheme and much more. We know this is a lifelong ongoing journey and we want you to know that we are not only all together tonight but wish to support you in your continuing journey of grief and love for your precious ch children and grandchildren. Over the coming weeks, thanks to the dedication and commitment of our bereaved parent volunteers, our helpline will be open as often as possible throughout December and at New Year. Our Facebook groups and forum are good places for support this month too. There's usually someone online to share and speak with together. Our retreat weekend in January is now fully booked, but we can add you to our waiting list if you would like to come. And if you are more than six months bereaved, this can be a wonderful weekend where you can be with other bereaved parents and siblings and take part in discussion groups, workshops and talks, or simply be with your compassionate friends in an understanding environment. A similar weekend will be held in Stirling in Scotland in May um, of next year. And we have our retreat coming up for parents in, uh, in the early years of your loss. So under around three or four years, it's in March and it's in a venue near Bath. And we will start to take bookings for this very shortly from our website. And we do try to offer financial support to enable anyone to attend. 
our retreats and support days, whatever your financial circumstances. So please do get in touch with us to find more, find out more. But we can't do all this without your help. These are really quite challenging times for charities. And, um, you know, if you are thinking of fundraising or donating at this time of year, we would welcome your support as it, it is tough at the moment in accessing funds for charities like ourselves. So for now, we hope that perhaps, perhaps the memories of Christmases past and winter holidays past that you shared with your child, your sibling or grandchild will in some way, some small way sustain you over the next difficult period. But we truly hope that in the coming weeks our, our gentle on you all and all of us compassion, uh, compassionate friends send you our sincerest, sincere warm wishes for a peaceful winter holiday season. Our time together this evening has come to an end. So please just take a moment and then leave our Zoom room in your own time over the next few minutes. Thank you so much for being with us tonight and we do wish you a peaceful rest of your evening. Good night.